episode of Beyond the Dumbbells. Your snarky source for all things nutrition, fitness, wellness, and lifestyle. From damaged libidos to a-holes at your local gym <laughs> and everything in between. So we've had a lot of a-holes in our gym. Yes. Um, what do you expect after eight years? Well, every, every body has an a-hole and some just have bigger ones than others, I guess. Yes. Some talk out of theirs too. And some smell. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> We had a conversation and it's been, I've been having this conversation with uh, business people, marketing people, and you and I talked about it a little bit and we're always looking for opportunities for self-improvement and what can we do things better, not just in business, but for ourselves. And we were starting to see a correlation. It's just things change, people change. And where are we going as an industry? Mm -hmm. Where are we going as people? Um, and I think there's an ebb and flow to everybody's focus and interests. So whether it's a hobby or it's your, your job or your fitness, we come, everything comes and goes in waves. Definitely. Um, there's points for me, it's usually spring and summer. I am (laughs) the most on point Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily aesthetics. I think just once you get more, I get more out of the outdoors and I think that kind of fuels and empowers me to do things. Um, when do you think you're best? Cause I think you're more of a fall person. I'm absolutely fall. I'm always at my peak, how I feel, how I operate. My focus is always better in those That's cooler mornings. If I can put on a pair of like jeans and a sweatshirt, I'm in all my glory. That's interesting. And you're like, except, well, that's mine yes shorts. No. Mine yeah, shorts. I hate shorts. And I can't live without them. <laughs> I, w- I went from Memorial Day to Labor Day. I think I only had to put pants on once, and that was for an event. I know. And that's because you didn't have a choice. Yeah, it was against my, so I don't, I don't count that. <laughs> but when we talk about the ebb and flow, and it's always clients, because uh, clients and people that we train, it's always a conversation point, because it's always something we have to um, talk about. Mm-hmm. And it's never really easy to cut things loose, um, especially when it comes to people you've been working with. Right. So last year we doubled down and our focus at the gym, but 18 months beforehand, our focus at the gym was, um, weight loss. Right. And it was, if we're not doing this, then we're not serving our people. Right. And when you were out of the weight loss circle or you're in that cyclical, I gain weight. I feel bad about myself. I lose weight. I feel bad about what I had to do to lose the weight. So I go back to not caring and then I bring weight back. And we tried to shortcut the process saying, when people come to us, if they're going to walk into our place or they're going to initiate a conversation with us, that it's like, all right, let's get raw. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. I don't look good naked. I don't feel good about the way I look when I'm naked, looking in the mirror, standing in front of my person, you know? So I think we bit down on that hard last year. I'm like, it's weight loss. That's all people really need. (laughs) Um, Because when they lose weight is when great things happen. Their Mm -hmm. self-esteem goes up. Mm -hmm. Your confidence goes up when the body's burning fat, right? You're more fertile. You're more attracted to your person. So obviously weight loss and being lean should be everyone's goal. Shouldn't it? You would, you would think, and I'm not saying you need to be a certain percentage. It, whatever the change is that makes you feel those things Mm -hmm. is how much you need to be. Right. You don't need to be a physique competitor to be sexy. Right. And uh, there's more about attitude and how you carry yourself anyway with that stuff. It's not, if your confidence comes from being a certain percentage of body fat, there's something else going on there that's not right. Definitely. So out of the past year, and I think we tallied up a big number. It was close to 10,000 pounds lost. Mm -hmm. I actually think it was like 8,700, so I'm rounding up. But we tallied (laughs) up, and that's just the trackable weight loss through um, these challenges that we're doing. Right. So 8,500 plus, we'll just, we'll, we'll cut it down to the bone, 8,500 pounds lost. And that's only through six week programs right. that didn't count, um, existing gym members that didn't count people that were successful in the initial, the initial, um, program right. and continued to lose. So let's just say that there was maybe another thousand pounds over the course of the three to 400 people. I think 10,000 pounds is, is a fair enough number to say. It's not like we know that we did 2000 and we jacked it up by eight. Correct. I guarantee you we hit 10. And a lot of gyms, they're like, yeah, wellness, come in and do some things. But we tracked it. And Mm -hmm. those numbers were were pretty freaking amazing. So when we're looking now as far as what's important to somebody, and we've noticed this because there's people that you can help them lose the weight. And it's like you change their tires for them. They're like, hey, that was great. Thanks. Right. And they don't continue on with the lifestyle. And it's 
again, accepting responsibility that I was a poor teacher, mm -hmm. I was like, well, obviously I didn't rub off enough on that person to have an influence. So I'm going to go over the top now and I'm going to just start preaching lifestyle about everything. Because if they see me, if they have a person or a mentor that they can just kind of follow in the steps with, mm -hmm. they'll be more successful. Right. If you got to go out and figure that crap out on your own, it sucks. Well, it's exhausting. And we've, we talk about it all the time, just pulling up for ourselves, different sites that have different information. And there's so much conflicting information that you can just get so lost in the sauce that it's like, why even try one thing? I mean, for everything that is a, an A plus on one website, it's an F on another. Mm -hmm. Like it's all madness. It's hard to find middle ground. Definitely. So if you have, you can find a mentor that has experienced, you know, different diets, different workouts, different everything. And you can tell that they have gotten the results they wanted, or they're really, really far into their journey, or they're just happy with all the changes they've made. Those are definitely the people you want to talk to. So the hope was that our lifestyle, and we've done the research, we've done the diligence, we, we're we actually practicing what we preach, yep. that that would be enough to lead people along the way. And it wasn't. Yes. Um, because we have a lot of people that would rather see the bottom of a bottle than, definitely. you know, than the number on a scale. Yep. They're like, hey, I, from Friday night till Sunday morning, sorry, coach, I'm off yep. duty. You know, I, I'm going to go do my, my thing. Mm -hmm. um, these are the people who still smell like booze on Monday. Right. Which, if that's your lifestyle... Rock on. Exactly. And we talked about this like 30 shows ago about how I I won't be able to live with myself if somebody comes in and says, oh my gosh, you know, coach, my doctor said that I am in big trouble mm -hmm. because I feel a bit of responsibility being in the paid professional chain of right. that person's life. So anyway, fast forward. Now we're starting to see that after really killing ourselves, trying to get people to a certain place in their lives where they had confidence, they felt attractive, they looked good naked, that that would kind of drive the next level. They would go home and influence their person. They would influence <laughs> their kids. They would mm -hmm. take it to their job. And then maybe some of them, they would pay it forward, which is to be a mentor or inspire somebody else. Right. And it's not happening. No. And I have no freaking idea why. I think that the biggest thing with people is that they want to be a certain weight or something for someone else more than they want it for themselves. And I may have mentioned this on a show before, but we had an old client who, um, we did like a, um, girls night at the gym one night. And this girl just came in, I mean, dressed to the nines. First of all, she dropped it gorgeous anyway, but she sat down and I said, Oh my gosh, you look absolutely amazing. And she said, well, thank you. And she said, you know, that women, we dress for other women. We don't dress for the attention of men. We want our girlfriends, our coworkers, our gym buddies, and everybody else to be the ones that compliment us. And she had said, more than we want it for ourselves. So if you... Do you think that's true? You know, it's interesting. Until she said it, I would have been like, mm-mm, not true at all. I, I think it's 100% the truth. Except, maybe 99, if... I wouldn't go out if I didn't feel confident thinking that somebody else might think I look good. And like, mm. I wouldn't put on an outfit and be like, man, I really hope one of my sisters says, damn, Jen, you look amazing. But I think subconsciously women do it more often than we'd care to admit. Hmm. But what is that called? I don't know, but it's one of those instances where if you don't want to just look good for you, if you are out to impress somebody else, then why are you chasing a goal? Does it matter if you're doing it for other, and you're not looking for other approvals, you're just trying to peacock bigger than somebody else? Ex that's Oh my God, that's the perfect way to put it. It is a bigger peacock. So uh -huh. are you more focused on being a peacock or being uh, arm candy? Exactly. But, well, So which is better? I would, I would hope that somebody would want to be arm candy versus peacocking, right? I don't know. Like, I think it depends on the person. So I can say for myself, uh, it's... I, if I look in the mirror, I'm going to go back. I'm going to tell a story about when we were dating. So when we were dating and we went down to Florida to visit, um, my really good friend, Susie, uh -huh. we were, oh my gosh, how long have we been together? A couple months, maybe. Maybe. And I brought a dress down that when I put it on and I looked in the mirror, I was like, wow, <laughs> I know this is going. wow. Like you're really going to get his attention tonight. And I rounded the corner and you were in the mirror doing something and you said something along the lines of, I look really good. And you never 
complimented me. You huh. never said you like the dress that I look good or whatever. And it stays in my mind because it was so funny because it was one of the first times I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to try to impress this man who's such pain in the butt. And I didn't get anything. But what didn't change for me is that it didn't, I didn't think I looked worse. I was like, you know what? He can think he looks good as much as he wants, but I know I look good. Okay. So I think you've got, what are you doing it for? What are your goals for? Why do you put on the outfit you're going to do? Do you get your hair cut because you want your wife to say, you know, you look good? Or do you get your hair cut because you take a sense of pride in how you look? So, so I think with, we're, are we still on track? I have no idea. I think we're on track. This is all related. I think that there is probably a social economic standing with the way women might dress. Mm -hmm. How done up are you? I mean, you've got the red bottom shoes. You've right. got weird things that are obviously economic differentiators amongst women. Definitely. And then I think there's even a skill with how it's applied, with how you look, being able to put outfits together, Definitely. your makeup, you know, and then being able to do different makeup because makeup, as I've seen, it takes different skill and it takes different trends and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. So you're not just saying, do I look good for the person? It's almost like you're positioning yourself to be the better looking person right. out of the social group of girls. So if a woman's going to show up at an event, she's like, I will be the hottest ticket in this place. Right. So it's not like, I hope the girls think I look good. It's you're running for, <laughs> I want most of the attention tonight. Right. So is it a, which is funny because to welcome the attention of one gender wouldn't negate the attention of another. It so to say you're doing it for women it's obviously going to draw the male's attention too. Right. Okay. It's funny that, that she might have rationalized it that way to say, oh, I'm doing it for the ladies. When in reality, it's I'm doing it for the room. I'm doing it for the room. Yeah, that's true. That's I think that, but I think that, you know, back to earlier, just talking about why, you know, why aren't people caring about weight loss or why do they hit their goal and then they really don't care? It's like, well, just like you pick your outfit out, are you doing it for yourself or somebody else? So are you... Is your goal to say, so let's say I said to you, you know, I want to be, let's do completely unre unrealistic. I want to weigh 110 pounds. Do I want that for myself because I've been there and I have specific areas that I'd like to tone up? Or do I want that number because I want the attention of somebody else? And I think if you want, you don't want it for you, you want it for somebody else. That's where the failure keeps happening. Which is funny because nobody looks like a number. So that is a confidence driver. Absolutely. I just had a conversation with um, a lady last night who was saying that people like to guess her weight. And she is a super, super muscular girl. I <laughs> that's mean, a, that's a dangerous game. But we were talking and we just have that. It's funny. We don't know each other incredibly well, but we just have that relationship. And so I was like, I could have, I never, I wouldn't have guessed her at the weight that she is. But she, the guesses that people make on a woman with that much muscle, I'm like, what are they smoking? <laughs> so it's like, you're absolutely right. Nobody's going to. As in she was compact and like they were always way under or they were. Way under, like 30, 40 pounds under. Yeah. Dudes never care about a weight. No. Okay. So it doesn't matter what you look like walking in. Like I said, it's, it's confidence and it's, it's your moxie. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's the mojo you carry, mm -hmm. but it's what can deliver that mojo to that person is the number on the scale. The, yes. the number is either going to make you think you're sexy or the number is going to tell you you're not, which there's some headspace in there that needs to kind of be like, that number isn't you. No. Number's just data. I mean, no. We just need that number to show progress yep. you know, if you're going forward or backwards, but that number doesn't make you. Do you think that it would be more helpful and people would be more successful if it was you based on, so if you said to a man, you know what, you wear a size 42 waist mm -hmm. in jeans, what size jean would you like to get to? And almost do like, it's almost like you want to go to like Walmart or something and keep buying the next sizes down yeah. until you fit the one you do. And it's almost like, now, why don't you tell me what you think you weigh to just show people maybe that's the way to do it is to start tackling this on a, a size you'd want to go to. That's realistic, of course. I've seen something like that. There's, uh -huh. the, you'll have a panel of guys or girls in a photo and it's just like, guess their weights. And oh, and they're you, all the same. And they're all the same. Yeah. So 
here's the, and here's something with clothes because you brought something up that's really funny. Clothes make you feel. Okay, so when you're putting on a pair of clothes, one, if I just laid all these clothes out on the table and I told three women to go in and say, just pick what makes you feel the best. Right. That means they're not too tight, they're not too restrictive, they fit your form, they fit your hips. Hey, you feel good in them. You would rock it. But then as soon as somebody goes, oh, by the way, you're wearing a 12. Oh, yeah. It would crush them. Yes. Because for some reason, and keep in mind, they might have looked fantastic. Exactly. But because you're not cramming yourself like a sausage link into something that isn't realistic. Yes. And what happens when you wear clothes that don't fit all day? You feel like garbage. Because yes. they don't fit good. Yeah. You know, you're blood restricted. You're always looking. You're always playing. Well, you're always tugging, pulling yes. up. So the the numbers don't really matter. Um, because, and you've already seen it. I've seen it. How things, how different manufacturers produce sizes is a joke. It's the most twisted thing I've ever seen. And now that the population is greater in size, because yes. you don't want to tell someone you're you're a 14 now. So we're going to adjust our entire clothing line so that the old 14 is now a 12 or yes. a 10, which is why people that go in there that wore a large their entire lives are now fitting into a small. Yes. It doesn't, I'm wearing, I've got medium shirts upstairs. I'm like, there's no way I'm, a, I've never been a medium in my life. No, I think what's interesting. I like to like play with clothes like that and look at tags and stuff. You've got old shirts that are extra larges, and if you lay them out to the medium, next to the medium, they're the same freaking that's right. size. That's right. I still have, that's right, I've got some upstairs that are extra larges. Exactly. But it's so funny, because to look at you, it's like, in the traditional sense of medium, you would look and be like, you wouldn't wear medium if your life <laughs> depended on it. Strappy. People would probably say, they have. They've bought you shirts that are extra large. I've got some upstairs that somebody just recently brought me. I exactly. Like, this, I was like, dude, this, this is like an old double XL. Exactly. But yeah. the... It's just, it's very funny. So we we're pursuing something that we don't know who we're pursuing it for. And we're obsessed by external influences. How do the other ladies in the call, I'm using ladies, but I'm talking guys too. Of course. How do my, do the demographics around me see me? How do I see myself? Right. What is my coach telling me in my gym? What is my doctor telling me? And somewhere in the middle, you need to find a ground that makes you want to get up in the morning. Right. And you don't have these crappy thoughts. Clothes today, they're coming back with the high, high-waisted high jeans. Oh, my gosh. I'm not used to seeing that. In the 80s, that was that was spank material. Just back in the <laughs> – that was the Jordashes. I was like, I mean, did he just say spank? Yeah, <laughs> but that was that was what girls oh, wore. That's sexy. what women wore, Jordash, right? Yes. But now that they're coming back because we're so used to these under the belly button by oh, three, Lord four above. inch low rise yes. button fly. And it's like – With your butt crack hanging out. Well, there's no shape to a butt when they're low rise. And now that you've got the high oh, hip, that's funny. now there's a huge freaking ass right there <laughs> because you're not used to seeing that because pants don't go up. They weren't, they haven't been pulled up that high in 15 years. Exactly. Um, so the, the idea that you are influenced and what influences you now that we're heading into the off season, people aren't going to be wearing shorts and tank tops anymore. So it's really, I don't give a crap what I look like. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to pursue that lifestyle because now I'm around people that, it's all about football. It's all about beer. It's all about pizza. Sunday fun day. Mm -hmm. This is the time people turn off the um, the give a shit factor. Well, there's more things that you can hide under. It's yeah. all the layers, but it goes right back to if you, I don't think I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I'm a body that changes with the seasons. I think I go through my own seasons, but I don't think I may starve myself summer ease into pork out over the winter. I think I maintain a pretty. It's a mature lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean like you're a mature person. I mean, I'm definitely not a mature person. No, I'm, I'm definitely not mature, but you've spent enough time living within a boundary that mm -hmm. it's on autopilot now. So you've got your conforming behavior is to conform on the healthy side versus the conforming behavior is, you know, going to the pizza places and right. hitting happy hours three nights a week. Everyone has a baseline that we default to. Mm -hmm. And if you're not practicing to change that baseline over periods of time, you're always going to default to the other one. It took me years. It was only in my 40s that I mm -hmm. finally got a handle on this. So it was, um, crap, it was 20, I was almost 15 to 20 training years old before I'd figured out I'm not seeing progress. I'm not living the way I want to. My health is crap. And I had to conform. Right. But people now, especially the, the newbies, the ones that are still trying to figure themselves out and they disappear 
their training age and their baseline isn't where it needs to be mm -hmm. for long term. Mm -hmm. So, so would you say like it's so kind of like circling back on? Do you think that weight loss kind of isn't enough because people don't? Number one, they may not want it as much as they are outwardly portraying that they do. But they also may not understand exactly what it takes and changes that you need to make and cycling different things. And do you think maybe it's just kind of a, maybe a bit of a lack of knowledge? I mean, you're, you're definitely in the best shape. You just keep getting better and better year after year. I've tried to build my business on knowledge. Mm -hmm. And there are schools of thought that are like, people don't want to be taught anything. Right. And I, um, whether that's right or wrong, I don't subscribe to it. I believe that if someone doesn't understand how to navigate their own health, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to help somebody else navigate theirs. And if the population is a bunch of mindless drones and it's just feed me, see more, just tell me what to do, <laughs> coach. I'm, I don't, I'm too dumb feed to know what's going on more. with my body. Um, we're in a privileged age where there's probably a fair number of generations to come that won't ever know what it's like to have to go find clean water. Right. All right. You're never gonna have to source your own food. You will never have to field dress an animal. Um, because that's the society that we live in. There's the majority of the population out there that still doesn't eat more than once a day. Uh, yeah. But we're in a society where we're like, people don't want to understand. Just, just spoon feed them what they need to. This is good. This is bad. Stay away from the bad. Yes. Do what you can. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's awesome. If I'm working with a bunch of emotionally destructive children, mm -hmm. don't hit Susie, stop biting him. That's right. fantastic guidance. There you go. But with an adult where everything is on the line with, I was talking to a client a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's starting her weight loss journey for the first time mm -hmm. at uh, 61 years old. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm in big trouble because my family has longevity. We live into our 80s and 90s. Yeah. And I said to her, the worst thing that can happen to you is that you don't die. Yeah. Because if you continued on with this path, because she is a perfect example of what, do what makes you happy. Yes. Eat what you want. Don't worry about the consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, don't teach anybody anything because this woman's now 60 years old and she has no idea the difference between a carb and a protein. Right. And she's like, well, I, I've never had to do this before. Mm -hmm. That's what that produces. So if we're talking to 30 and 40 year olds now, and we said, look, there's a real good chance that modern medicine could keep you alive into mm -hmm. your eighties. Definitely. Long beyond your retirements, you know, ability to pay for your lifestyle, you're going to have to create a lifestyle that is healthy, isn't uh, dependent on medicine, isn't dependent on other people carrying you up and down stairs. Right. Um, so we're talking about superficial stuff like how do you look and how do your pants fit? But when we say people don't seem to care about adapting a lifestyle, well, they all think, I guess they all think they have plenty of time to change later. I think the biggest thing is that we hear a lot of the times, or I know that I do, are people that have gotten so far off of track and they just say, I don't know how it happened. I mean, it's like, you know, I was 21 and just getting out of school and now I'm 50 years old and looking back and it's like, wait a minute. How did 80 pounds come on? How did I lose all my energy? When did I, when did I forget what sleeping good felt like? Yep. So I don't know if maybe if people are just open to learning or open to doing their own research, my, my number one has always been, you just have to be honest with yourself. I love that this woman in her early sixties did not wait until her doctor said, you've got three months. You've got three months to get weight off or change your lifestyle or you are going to die. Yep. She's now realizing it that, uh oh, I wasted a lot of years not caring. And she's still young enough that I think she can make a significant impact in a positive way. She's doing great. Yeah. And, she's for, the, doing great. and for the first time, and what she had said that was, that really stuck out was nobody has ever taken the time mm -hmm. to understand what I need and really taken the time to teach me how to get there. Yeah. Because most trainers are. They have this mindset where <laughs> don't talk down to your people by trying to seem smart. I've never understood That's that so because the, the, my inside, the greatest thing I want to do is to teach and to pass things on. Mm -hmm. That's where my need for serving people comes from is I want to teach you. Granted, I'm excited and some things might be a little too high level 
we can dumb it down, <laughs> especially if you don't understand it. But the idea is if you have knowledge that helps people avoid pain, why wouldn't you want to share it? Right. I wish two people would realize that in our business, number one, just like any business, I think they're horrible gym owners and fitness professionals out there. But there are some really amazing ones that the knowledge share is not to be like, I have all the answers and you're stupid. The knowledge share is always, we have, especially you and I, we have tried it all, done it all, experienced it. We're never going to dog something that's amazing and Mm -hmm. we're never going to praise something that sucks. Mm -hmm. But just as I wouldn't know how to, you know, take my iPhone apart and put it back together, they may not know how to take their bodies and start to build it back together where I have good analogy. So it's like one of those things. If somebody says to me, Hey, can I help you? Can I help you with your iPhone? And I'm like, who do you think you are Help me with my iPhone? And it's like, but if they can actually help me and I can take swallow my pride a little bit and accept the help. Yes. And if you start to backslide or you, you know, you saw a number on a scale and, and you want to maintain that to just be able to, Again, tuck that pride aside and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, Brian, Jen, one of your staff, somebody else that's in, you guys have, you guys have done this. You know, is it easy for you? What are you doing? Like, how does this work? Just swallow a little bit of pride and just say. Do you think it's pride? Um, I think for some it's pride and I think it's a huge battle. My, my biggest battle, and I will put this one out there, is you know what you need to do to mine is not so much about look mine's about how my clothes feel and how I feel. But I, it is a constant struggle for me on a Friday night when we find a a new local bar or something that makes some amazing drink or drinky drinky, or I am dying to dig into my Italian roots and have some pasta and meatballs. And it's the battle of, your goals and how you know they can be easily thrown off and wanting to quote unquote live. You just do what makes you happy. Oh my gosh. That makes me, that makes me crazy. Just the like, other thing that makes me crazy is do everything in moderation. That's what the devil told Eve. Just do what makes you happy. How about, it, it is what he told Eve. <laughs> and how about like, just do every, everything in moderation. Even moderation. Even moderation. That's right. Yeah. But I, I think that if, I think we all have a little bit of pride. I think that it can. An ego. An ego that comes in different ways. I think that once you can kind of let that go and realize you might not have all the answers, develop a positive professional relationship with your fitness people where you can go in and you can say, I'm backsliding really bad. I don't know what's going on. Are you sure you want it? I absolutely want it, but I just keep getting caught up in the same thing. You know, sometimes it takes an accountability cycle. Absolutely. You've got to put something in there that, that does a pattern interrupt Yes. or it breaks a routine or the person just has difficulty in identifying what are the processes or what, what events take place that triggers a decision. Yes. And if you, everything we do, if you back up to the point where you said, F it, I'm yes. going to do this, there's usually triggers. Yes. For, for me, if it's like you said, talking about going out and getting a drink, yeah, I'm solid till Thursday afternoon. Yep. And then all of a sudden, something within 12 hours that happens without my control, there's triggers set up. This is like, you know what? Go have one. Exactly. You earned it. Or you have a wife that's like, hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think about going down to that new bar? Um, <laughs> it's a terrible idea on Tuesday. It's a terrible idea on Friday. Like, let's, let's go Friday. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did, did I say one? I meant to, um, but I'm a big person too. And, and, and I don't know how guys work. I don't know if, you know, guys walk around with their favorite outfit or whatever, but for women, it's always like, did you ever wear? And ladies, it has to be within the last couple of years. Please don't go back and like, try to try your prom dress on from high school and mm-hmm. wonder why it doesn't fit. But for me, In the past few years, if I've worn a dress or something where I was like, oh my gosh, I looked amazing. If I can still zip that dress and it still looks good from the side and the front, you're on the right track. Think think about all the worry you've applied to your life if that thing still fits. Exactly. The back and forth and the up and down. It's been like a top and the heartache and the tears and the, I hate my outfit and I don't like this. And then you're still the same size. And then you're still the same size. Yeah. Plus or minus a pound. Great. I know. Who cares? The, um... By the way, happy 50th show. 
half the 50th show. Number, number five. Oh, we should have made a bigger deal out of it. We'll make a deal out of 100. Oh. 100. If there are people are still around to hear us in 50 more. There's still one or two listening. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we hit 50. The, um, the, the other big thing, and um, lifestyle, weight loss, I know we keep talking about it. It's a, it's a freaking fitness program. What do you expect? But when we, when we get into how can we help people not feel crappy about themselves, there's, there's another topic that we'll say for another show that, that talks about, and, and I'm bringing this up because it's a separate topic because there's a poindexter in our life that likes to um, just belittle the idea that um, there are certain things that people shouldn't eat on mm-hmm. a regular basis, right? And I would take the scorched earth uh, I would even risk illness and disease mm-hmm. by eating uh, something with a parasite on it. This sounds ridiculous, but uh-huh. to look, if you just drew out if thens, if you just drew logic diagram, put a Venn diagram on the board and you start drawing correlations with what's happened in the last 30 years that doesn't have an explanation tied to it. There's no why. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? Why are women having girls having periods at nine, ten years old? Yeah, I know we've been talking about it for years. That oh my gosh, they're starting so young, nine, why? nine, ten years. Right? Why? Okay. Yes. Why now are there? Cancer didn't just pop up and it's been consistent. It's no. getting worse. Right? right. So now I think the statistic I saw the other day was one in seven. Yeah. One in seven people are going to have cancer. Mm-hmm. One in seven. Yeah. Something's getting worse. What about um, child allergies? Mm-hmm. Right now, kids are allergic oh to gosh, everything. It's bad. They're allergic to everything. Yes. Emotional and behavioral disorders in yep. kids. Suicide rates. Yes. Depression. Mm-hmm. All right. Weight problems. Yes. There's all these correlating um, outcomes. There's all these things that are happening that if you just sit there and look at something under a, a flipping microscope and you go, well, the, the science says that this is safe because I've got a, t- a testing pool of 10,000 people out of billions. <laughs> I was going to say, which is nothing. That it says this hasn't caused any problems in this population. So the idea that these external influencers independently tested in controlled environments with very small populations, it's good to go. The FDA gave it the stamp of approval. We're fine. But when you look at influencer A along with influencer B, C, D, and E, along with my genetic history, along with my illnesses and my exposure to diseases, Mm -hmm. different places I travel in the world. I had lead paint in my house growing up. I played with mercury as a kid out of uh, (laughs) thermostats. So when you take all those things, you've got an environment that's got variables to infinity. Mm -hmm. You cannot just say cut and dry that the environment that's influencing us externally, toxins, chemicals, exposures, bad air, blah, blah, blah. But then the stuff that we ingest. And the yeah. stuff that we take in. And when you add those things together, there is a problem. Mm-hmm. This is definitely a different show. It's a different show. Yeah. But when we look at how people feel and how they prioritize things and why they can't get the traction mentally to say, I'm going to do something and stick to it. Yeah. What if you're too chemically off balance Yes. to be able to make a decision that holds you through? It's all driven by sleep disorders. Sleep disorders can be driven by biological disorders. Biological yes. disorders are delivered by the, f- or driven by the food problems. Yep. So uh, a lot of times I will acquiesce and say it may not be something that you can directly control right now so that's a huge rant just to say that there's there's so much that you sitting here saying i choose to be thin right you're going to go through highs and lows over the next six to eight weeks Mm -hmm. that's going to make that's going to rock your world i can't i won't i don't want to and it doesn't just come down to being stubborn and lazy Mm -hmm. that's not the answer so we'll talk about this on the next one I know it's big. You've got that holy crap look on your face. Well, I was, I was worried we were just going right into another show. No, 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 no. I, I just, but I, I think this topic is huge, and I think there's a lot more to it. And I think that some people may not factor in or actually hear what people say about things they're putting in their body. And, I mean, my this we'll definitely talk about the next one, but we knew somebody that was on birth control pills. Mm-hmm. And when she went off that little bit of weight that she couldn't get rid of went off with it and she changed nothing else about her life. So it's just, but the FDA approved it and yeah. it didn't say weight gain on the label. Oh, no. See, now I could go off about that one. I'm going to save that one too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, my rant was only about 15 seconds. I realized I wasn't breathing. <laughs> I, just, I, I didn't I talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. talking about that. I know how you sit up, you sit up and then 
<laughs> I'm sitting up right now. <laughs> exactly. And you're playing with the, with the cord again. I'm getting fidgety. You are getting fidgety. The chair is going back and forth. I don't even know what we started out. So we were just talking about um, priorities and exactly. how people feel. No, and it was just the, you know, 10,000 pounds lost and, you know, why isn't that the priority? And it's just kind of like, I really do think we could be on to something. I'd love to hear people's thoughts on, would you be more motivated if you bought the next size clothing down from where you are? If that's where your goal is, Mm -hmm. you know, you want to go from, for women, it's a lot from that 10 to the eight because it's this double digit to single. And no matter what you weighed, could you promise yourself you'd be happy, including if your weight was exactly the same? You know, it's funny if, because I think guys' clothes, jeans are based on inches. Yes. And women are based on sizes. Yes. I think if you went inches, you'd find that uh, your old clothes are probably a different girth. I guarantee it. Than the ones that are out there now. Yeah, there's a lot of jeans that are now moving into the inches for women. I think the UK is all numbers. Uh I mean, it's not like generic size charts. I think they're actually like measurable numbers. But I have, I wonder if there would be like just more towards a movement of stop, stop worrying about your weight so much as as long as you're getting your physical and you're not just, you know, you look amazing. You're not just in their stupid mm-hmm. bracket of, okay, you're, you're average. Um, but I'd be intrigued to see if it was like, man, if I got into these jeans or this black dress or whatever, and I feel amazing, if you could really say, I don't care at all what that scale says. Well, dude, how about if you feel amazing? You feel amazing. Exactly. It wouldn't have anything to do with the number. We're so jacked up in the head. I'm That's not. my conclusion. I'm not. I'm you're not human. <laughs> you're not human. I can I can separate the two. You're, no, and, and you're you are not. <laughs> when when we what's the word like embalm you or whatever? We're gonna find that there's nothing human on the inside. Maybe you're like the Terminator. It's synthetic. Exactly. It's all the chemicals. <laughs> All right, awesome. This is a this is a meaty topic, and we jammed a lot, and uh, uh, I talked very fast. That's okay. That's all right. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, happy fiftieth fiftieth again. Yes. Um, thank you, listeners. Um, you've kept us going just uh, with the positive feedback and the comments. Mm-hmm. Um, it still surprises me some of the people that come up and say, "Oh, I've been listening to your show for a while, and I've never met them." So yes. that was that's always a very cool moment. Exactly. Um, and and along those lines, make sure that you don't repeat what somebody said, which is they went to bed with us. I did hear that. Yeah. I was like, what? Yes. <laughs> we, don't wanna, we don't want to know about your bedroom habits. I'm <laughs> I, just kidding. I go to bed with you every night. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. Awesome, guys. Have a fantastic day. Please like and share. Please comment. Um, it only takes a minute, and it um, helps beef, off, beef, beef us up a bit. Yeah. Thank right. you. Awesome, guys. You all rock. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. Stay true.